farther than mine <laughs> You're not. Your hand is reaching out for my Lab. This week, we're talking about faith, while we take a global look at what it means to encourage each other. Skylar! Skylar! Have you seen my map? Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about faith. Which is trusting what you can't see, because what you can see. I know something awesome that you can see. What's that? Your family and friends around you on Sunday morning or wherever and whenever you do church. What am I supposed to trust because of that? That church is way bigger than where you happen to meet. In fact, church shows up in all kinds of ways across the entire globe. Have you ever visited a different church in another country? Actually, I have. I visited the Notre Dame in Paris, but I also know someone who grew up in a different place. Venezuela. Hold on. Venezuela, top of South America. So, who's your Venezuelan friend? His name is Italo, and we get to talk to him. Right now. Way cool. Hi, Italo. Thanks so much for talking with hey, us. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me. So, you've been part of or visited churches in a lot of different places, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, first, I grew up in Venezuela, where I served uh, on the kids and, and the student side. Uh, that church group, like, for nearly like 5,000 people uh, while I was there. Then I moved to Costa Rica to work there with a smaller church. Uh, and then I have been thankful to be on training with uh, other different churches uh, in Mexico, Puerto Rico, Panama too. Hold it, let's see all of those on a map. Wow, what were some of these different churches like? Well, in Costa Rica, I did a missionary training and I visited churches in the jungle to help with the construction there. Then, uh, some of them, they were really remote, like they didn't have running water, electricity at all time. It was, it was different. Wow, that's really hard. Yeah, it's a little bit hard for them, but you know, even the people in the villages, they don't have anything, they're really joyful. They see them to worship God, it's like nothing I have seen in other other places. The people there were completely committed to loving God and to serve others. What are some of the ways you've seen God work in the churches you visited? Yeah, one thing I love is that a lot of these churches really value the personal relationship. When you're uh, going to these churches, even if they are small or bigger, the people know your name. Like you feel when you go to a church, you are part of like a family. And after church, the people just hang out, they share a meal. It's not just come here, sit down, and that's it. So it's just, it's just great. So great. What are some of the ways you've seen Jesus followers encourage each other? Well, one church I worked with uh, in Puerto Rico was growing super fast, but they didn't have a building. So another church, another church said to them, say, hey, we're not using our building in the afternoon, so come and just use it for free. Like, just have your church in our church. That's awesome. 
Yeah, and in Costa Rica, the church I was working with, they had a partnership with this place uh, called the Hope Center. And they were really, or they are, because they still are there in a really bad area of the city. And some people of the church were challenging each other uh, to help there. And now they give uh, meals every day for more than uh, more than 300 kids. And that's a lot. That's for some of those kids. That's the only meal they even have in that entire day. Is there a way you personally experienced encouragement from the church? Yeah, for sure. Like, for example, this one family up and up their home, uh, their home for me to stay with them for almost five months. They even gave me a chance, you know, to just come to the United States, stay with them, like no charge. They fed me. They gave me a room for myself. They didn't ask for anything. They just want to be, they just want to make me be part of their family. That's so cool. Italo, it has been great talking with you. Thank you so much for your time. No, thank you guys for having me. It was a pleasure. See ya. Bye. I love hearing these stories. It makes me want to travel and see what God's doing all over the world. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Hebrews, a letter written to early believers in Jesus. But before Hebrews, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So, at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed, but on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly. But some believers became confused or distracted and started to forget their faith in Jesus. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Hey, hey Erica. Erica. The book of Hebrews is a letter written to Jewish believers in Jesus, likely by a friend or follower of the Apostle Paul. The writer wants to remind these believers that Jesus is more important than anyone or anything else, ever. He challenges them to hold on to their faith in Jesus and to encourage others in the church to do the same. Chapter 10 says this, Let us hold firmly to the hope we claim to have. The God who promised is faithful. Our hope is in Jesus, who made a way for us to live forever with God. But like the Hebrew believers, it is so easy to get distracted from that hope. We hear constant messages telling us that hope is found in buying more stuff, in doing more activities, in zoning out from our problems. So in the midst of all this, how do we stay focused on our true hope? Hebrews continues. Let us consider how we can stir up one another to love. Let us help one another to do good works. One way to hold on to our hope in Jesus is by acting on it. We can encourage each other to show God's love to the world around us. Rather than just telling our friends to do good things, we can encourage them by living it out ourselves so what do love and good works look like? One way to put love into action is to put others first, whether it's first in line or letting your friend choose the game you play together. Another way to show God's love is by sharing what you have. It could be sharing your lunch, choosing to give away some of your toys, volunteering your time to help someone out. And you can definitely encourage others with your words. Instead of complaining or grumbling, choose to speak words that comfort someone. Remind others that God is always with them and that God gives us the strength to do hard things. Now, let's wrap up our verse from Hebrews. And let us not give up meeting together. Some are in the habit of doing this. Instead, let us encourage one another with words of hope. Let us do this even more as you see Christ's return approaching. Let's be real. Even though texting someone is great, it's just not the same as spending time with them in person. We need each other. One way to meet together is at church. It doesn't matter whether your church meets in a building or a storefront or even outside. It's the people who matter. Maybe it's been a long week and it would be easier to skip church altogether. You can tell your grown-ups you'd really like a chance to hang out with your friends at church. Another way to meet up together is to spend time with your small group or class, even outside of church. 
If you've got a game or a performance, you can invite your small group leader and friends from church or go to their events to cheer them on. And you can meet together just by hanging out with friends who love Jesus. Let's see those verses again. Let us hold firmly to the hope we claim to have. The God who promised is faithful. Let us consider how we can stir up one another to love. Let us help one another to do good works. And let us not give up meeting together. Some are in the habit of doing this. Instead, let us encourage one another with words of hope. Let us do this even more as you see Christ's return approaching. At the end of time, Jesus will return, and God will make right everything that's wrong. Only God knows when that will be. But in the meantime, we have an amazing opportunity to encourage each other to stay strong in our faith in Jesus and to show God's love to the world. The end. So church isn't just for learning stuff about God. It's also about the people we meet and helping each other be strong. Exactly, because our faith is stronger together. So what's our part in the story? Sometimes it's tempting to be a loner. You don't feel like you fit in, even at church. Or you've got sports on Sunday and it's hard to keep up with your church friends. Or it seems like none of your close friends care about following Jesus. Don't give up. Ask God to help you find at least a few friends who love Jesus and can encourage you. And if you feel like you're an outsider at your church, you're probably not the only one. See what happens if you start up a conversation with someone new in your small group. Or invite kids from your church to your birthday party. No matter what, you can choose to live out God's love. And encourage those around you to do the same. I think you got it. See you next time. Bye, Bye Erica. Bye. <laughs> so here's the thing. Our faith is stronger together. Hey, hey, what just happened? I think the power's out. I got an idea. I've got another idea. It's amazing. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. No. I think we need more candy.